90% of aspiring developers will fail getting that first developer job if they do not follow these principles that I'm gonna mention in this video. So my name is Christian Flora and I help people just like you learn code to become developers, either to get a job or to become freelancers, or maybe you want to create your own SaaS, your own startup, you wanna sell it, you wanna help people out with your code, this video is gonna help you do exactly that. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we start, please like this video, helps me out with my vanity metrics and it motivates me to make more videos for it. Before we even think about like what to learn and what to actually do and following a strategy or whatnot, we need to take a step back and try to actually understand what a web developer is actually supposed to be doing. Because if you're like me, when you, because if you're like me, when I was a beginner, I literally dive in straight into how to make a website, how to learn HTML, how to learn CSS, what projects to build. And even though that seems like the first logical step to do, in hindsight is the wrong thing to do. It's the wrong first step. Step zero is actually trying to understand what a web developer is actually doing. If you don't know what you are supposed to be doing, how do you know what tools should you choose? When I first started learning how to make music, for example, I knew I wanted to make house music. And that decision allowed me to find the right resources, to find the right uh, audio assets and the right synthesizers and the right compressors and the e right equalizers all these things that were like suited for house music. Now, if you want to become a web developer, you need to understand what a web developer does in their day-to-day -day life. So the first step would be to go on Google and research tech startups in New York, if you're in New York, you know, or tech startups in the US, or tech startups in Croatia or Greece, wherever you are. Try to understand what is the tech scene doing around you, what is happening around you, what's popping. Because based on that, you'll be able to have an idea about what products you will actually start working on. Because if you are like me, when I first started learning how to code, I was a consumer. So what is a consumer? A consumer is someone who is using the social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, if anyone is using Facebook nowadays. But you get me, like you're using the consumer version software and that is not really giving you a, an accurate idea of what tech is supposed to be doing. Then the next step is to learn the traditional big three languages, okay? HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I have a course, a free course. Click on the second link in the description. Join that, you can learn how to use HTML and CSS and JavaScript really quickly, actually. You'll build a couple of uh, beautiful websites. You'll build the Apple landing page, maybe a week or two. You'll build another website called the FinTrend and you'll learn how to build some small applications with JavaScript and you can put those in your portfolio if so you wish. I'm gonna give you a different advice than I usually give you. Go and start freelancing. You actually have two options here, right? The first option, is to cold call or to message or to email brick and mortar businesses that are in your area. So for example, let's say if you're a guy, you go and you get your haircut, right? Or if you're a girl, you go and you do your hair, right? And you put extensions and you change the color and whatever. And there is a very high chance that uh, these businesses don't have a website. So what you can do is you can call them or you can email them or you can even go in person and say hey i'm gonna build a website for you and i'm gonna do it for you for free with two conditions if you like it you are going to give me a testimonial so it can be a video testimonial so they can shoot a video and they say hey i worked with christian and christian is amazing and he did this website for me and now i'm getting more customers blah blah, blah. that's the first condition and then the second condition is to give you two referrals okay so to refer you to two other people and then you can start charging money from then onward onwards right if you're doing a good job you'll get paid from those two referrals you will uh, get another set of testimonials and then you can keep doing this forever throughout your career it's quite simple it's not easy because you have to actually you know reach out to these people and whatnot but it's doable so let me know what you think about this first step in the comment section if you like this idea like the video my motivation for making helpful videos for you comes from these simple things that you can do so like the video subscribe leave a comment this helps me out a lot now this would be like step 1.5 
if you want to become a developer and you don't want to freelance and build websites forever because you can kind of get stuck in there you should learn extra things okay the next thing would be to learn a library it can be react it can be Vue, it can be angular it can be svelte it doesn't really matter in my opinion because if you know one and if you know how to do a good job with one of them then you can change very easily and you can learn Vue or angular if that is what is popular in your area essentially you want to learn something that uh, you like and you see yourself using and then once you have some experience building applications with these libraries with these frameworks then you can easily learn anything else it's not that complicated i had many students that got hired as view developers or c sharp developers and i only taught them react and javascript so it doesn't really matter that much don't think that you are stuck with one thing if you are learning a specific library or framework you can easily learn any other stuff just be flexible once you are done with learning the basics of react and that's gonna take maybe a month or two to really understand everything i would recommend you to start preparing for interviews even though you might have an interview in like six months from now why because you don't want to cram everything you want to take the time to understand the basic concepts you know like i always ask this question what is the difference between var let and const not so many people know how to answer that question and it's a very basic question the difference between double equals and triple equals what is closure what is scope uh these basic questions believe it or not will pretty much destroy your interview okay you might think you're doing great later on that you got the interview you call your mom you call your dad you call your girlfriend your boyfriend whatever you have but in fact you failed i'm gonna put a qr code here on this video and i'm gonna leave a bunch of interview questions that i have collected over the years there will be some algorithms in there i want you to like prepare really seriously maybe 10 20 minutes per day you don't have to go like nuts with it but just start preparing from now on because that's gonna make your life way way easier you know react you know html and css you know javascript you're you're good to go the next step would be to actually start solving a real world problem and focus on building your resume and not your portfolio i hate the idea of having a personal website where you put all your projects because realistically speaking you are a noob you don't have that much experience and the worst thing that you can do as a noob is to put a bunch of applications in your portfolio to show everything that you can do and in fact you will not impress anyone and uh, you'll most likely fail getting that first developer job so what i want you to do is to build one application spend three maybe six months working on it trying to solve a real world problem and then you take that and you put it on your resume and you say that this is a job that you worked at or a startup that you've tried building and it failed or something like that and now you're looking for a job find the problem that you have in your life or try to find some sort of uh, business that is operating online and see what kind of problems they have and try to solve them there should be some way to find google sheet that a business is using okay to track their numbers to track their revenue to track their statistics their metrics and then you can convert that into an application and then you can put a nice landing page to that and you can say hey this is what i've made uh, this is what I can do. I solved the real world problem and I have learned this, 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 this thing doing so. It's focused on delivering value to people rather than ticking off boxes with technologies, okay? Because at the end of the day, all these technologies that you will learn eventually by mistake, okay? You'll end up learning a charting library or you'll end up learning a time parsing library. You'll figure those things out as you're building, as you are creating, as you are researching. Now, after you do this, uh, what I would recommend you to do is to find some sort of service that uh, will create a resume for you, okay? Don't use ChatGPT or don't just put together things. Find a proper service. I know some of them cost like $100, $200. That resume is going to make the difference between you getting hired or you not getting hired, okay? And then if you start getting interviews with that resume, that means the resume is good. And if you do not pass the interview, that means you do not know how to interview and there is something wrong that you're doing. And then you have to fix that. You need to figure out what that is, is maybe your delivery. You lack confidence, that could happen. If you lack confidence, then you need more interviews or you need to do some sort of interview prep with some other people. And those people have to be brutally honest with you and tell you what's up, okay? I am working now with a student and uh, a while ago, whenever I was interviewing him, he used to put his hand in front of his mouth and he was speaking like this very slowly. And I told him, like, bro, remove the hand from your mouth because you sound like you are not confident. 
you're lacking confidence. So no matter what you're gonna tell me, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, you will per be perceived as someone who doesn't have confidence. And me as a business owner, whenever I make a hire, I wanna have the confidence, I wanna feel that confidence from the person that I'm about to hire, that they will do what I want them to do to make me more money or to save me time or something along those lines. When I was younger, I did some crazy shit with my buddies, we did all these uh, social freedom challenges. First one was when I was living in London, I went to Trafalgar Square, which is one of the busiest streets in London. The challenge was to go in the middle of the road, okay, not where the cars are, but where the people are, and then just go on my back, just stay like this for like five minutes. That was the challenge. And it was extremely uncomfortable, but that removed fear from my body. Another one, and this is super embarrassing, I never thought I'm gonna say this online. I had to act like a stripper, again, in the middle of the street, in Trafalgar, or no, it was Leicester Square. It was like one of these poles for lights, right? And I had to like do the, you know, I can't believe I'm doing this, but like to do, to act like a stripper there. Another one. Um, Jesus, this one is so bad. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you the third one. If you are, if you are one of my students, you can ask me and I'll probably tell you, uh, or maybe not, but this one is too embarrassing to, to even tell. Basically, I did a lot of freedom, social freedom challenges. You can Google them up. You can uh, go on YouTube and see these people doing weird shit. And when you start to free yourself from having pressure from what other people think of you, you'll start to be more confident and you'll actually be able to impress someone in an interview and maybe they won't hire you for your skill set but they'll hire you because you have a good personality because at the end of the day if you have a good personality and you seem like you're coachable you'll be hired and yeah i know uh, it's a harder time to get a job compared with last year or two years ago but you know what now it's normal it was hard to get a job in finance before it was hard to get a job as a lawyer before as a new grad i guess in any industry it was hard to get a job now in tech is the same thing at some point things will come back to normal or the, or the normal will change okay maybe it's gonna be even better but all i know is that if you get good at this stuff and you focus on delivering value to people through your code through your applications then you'll actually be able to profit okay money comes when there is value and you need to figure out how to increase your value and how to Make yourself be perceived as high value and then you'll get paid. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. -bye.